scattered over 700,000 square kilometers of glistening Southern Pacific Ocean, 176 small tropical islands, which make up what is known as Tonga. And one, it seems, was chosen for the location of a rather amazing ancient structure. One of the most mysterious megalithic monuments in the world, an ancient trilithon known as the Megalith Gate of Hahamunga. The mainstream academic explanation for the site is as follows. Hahamunga is a megalith trilithon that was built around 1200 AD, built by a king of the time as the entrance to his royal compound, Heketa. As with many intriguing and confusing ancient structures upon Earth, if you dig further than mainstream attested views, you will often unearth another opinion, often suggesting a far longer, far more astonishing tale set much farther back within our past. And the Tonga Gateway is no exception. Although mainstream archaeology, through native folklore and currently accepted, chronological knowledge of the previous inhabitants of the island suggests that the Tonga Trilithon is but a mere 800 years old. There exists three rather large problems with this conclusion. Until, of course, erosion inevitably takes hold, drawing a line between a discernible archaeological feature and an apparent geological one. The Tonga Gateway now consists of three coral limestone slabs, each still weighing in at around 40 tons three rather large elephants in the room for mainstream archaeology. Like with all other trilithons dotted around the world, the documented primitive capabilities during modern historical timelines will continue to demonstrate a lack of credibility to the school-taught fanciful tales given for their construction. On the contrary, these sites indicate a once far more capable civilization left somewhere within Earth's very distant past. For example, there are many legends linking the Hahamanga Gateway to Maui. As William Corliss astutely put it, Maui is but a label, slapped upon everything found within the South Pacific which cannot be explained." End quote. Additionally, to disassemble the phony public narrative further, Corliss's own research, other explorers of the island, along with Eric von Daniken's compelling and comprehensive studies of the island, found that islanders, although willing to tell tall tales to tourists, lacked any reasonable replication skills at a later date. Put simply, they were lying. Indeed, although they spoke of a king some 800 years ago, the massive stones being a gateway to his Heketa, after extensive exploration of the island by many people, especially behind the gateway, which the entire site is seemingly focused in on, no trace of a Heketa has ever been found. Some specialists who have studied the erosion patterns upon the coral stones have come forward with claims that the Tonga site is a ruin far older than currently thought, and that although the stones are rough in appearance today, they were much larger and also smoothly cut into squares using an unknown ancient technology. This, some claim, may have happened as far back as 10, maybe even 100,000 years ago. Was the Hahamunga Gateway some form of ancient stargate? Why place it exactly where it is? Why build it exactly how it was built? Who would go through such effort of transporting many 40-ton blocks of coral to this small island, then somehow constructing this once enormous and mysterious structure aligned as a gateway that led to nowhere? Or did it? The Necromantion once used as a Greek temple of necromancy, devoted by the Greeks to their god of the underworld Hades and his female consort Persephone. This site was believed by the Greek devotees to be the door of Hades, allowing entry to the realm of the dead. Located at the meeting point of the Acheron, Pyriphlegethon, and Cocytus rivers, which were believed to have also flowed through the kingdom of Hades. With names given to the rivers, presumably by the Greeks, interpreted to be joyless, burning coals, and lament. Whilst other temples, such as the Temple of Poseidon at Tenera, the temples at Hermione and Cume in Italy, and Heraclea within Pontos, were known to have been used for the practice of necromancy, 
it was the Necromantion that was the most famous of them all. According to ancient Greek beliefs, while the bodies of the dead decayed in the earth, their souls would be released, traveling to this purported underworld via fissures within the earth. These spirits of the dead, according to the ancient Greeks, were said to possess abilities that the living did not have, including the power of precognition, the power to foretell the future. They therefore claim that these temples were erected by them in locations that were entrances to this mysterious underworld, used as altars for the believers of such to practice necromancy, a belief form of communication with the dead. This practice was attempted in order to receive prophecy. However, if one explores the architecture of such site, not only does this ancient Greek claim of construction become a clear, dubiously attested claim, but the evidence for highly advanced precision block building, now known as polygonal masonry, is discovered throughout the site. This existence of such sophisticated block building, which is not only found within and upon nearly every as yet unexplained ancient site upon the Earth, but is incredibly similar in form to that of many other ancient sites within Italy, specifically the ancient wall which can still be found surrounding the Acropolis of Alatre and at other sites, including within the ancient ruins of Delphi. This astonishing feat of ancient engineering is as yet unexplained by modern academics, strongly indicating that this ancient site was originally built by a civilization now lost to history. Furthermore, like the enigmatic metal clamps, whose remnants are to be found within a number of these same ancient sites that were originally used by this highly intelligent group, these once utilized to keep the stones in their fitted positions as they shifted and settled over the millennia. These clamps' design vary from continent to continent. Our reason for mentioning this curiosity is that although the sophisticated methods of creating these ruins often remain similar or the same, depending upon the continent they are found, is dependent on the style and material these methods are made from. This, to us, strongly suggests that these ancient structures may have indeed been built by the different races, found within these differing countries. The commanding force, the leading power of these groups, was the same worldwide power and font of this knowledge, who, with their clearly incredible technological prowess, successfully created such structures, and indeed the Necromantion, which, regardless of their tremendous age, has successfully survived a vast amount of millennia, successfully making it into our own modern ancestors' lives, predictably adapted due to their wondrous nature, into their historical belief systems, often being adopted surrounding spirituality, either for a theistic worship, burial, or in the case of the Necromantion, for the use of contacting the dead through the mystic teachings of necromancy. It is, undoubtedly, highly compelling. Who built the Great Pyramids? Why did they build them? If we take known Egyptian accounts as accurate, then many of the ancient structures upon the plateau were designed surrounding the subject of death. A civilization that believed when the sun set, it traveled through an underworld guarded by Anubis. In other cultures, which we believe, re-inhabited sites. Ruins built with knowledge that we will now show far succeeded that which these people, who carved their own identities upon these structures, ever possessed. The Aztecs, although displaying similar primitive understandings of the path of the sun, interestingly shared similar beliefs to the Egyptians. Specific animals connected to astronomical objects are seen everywhere. These similarities in belief structures could be seen as evidence of a seagoing civilization. Ancient peoples crossing oceans, sharing their belief systems with each other. These people who artistically demonstrated their limited and heavily superstitious knowledge of the universe upon all these ancient sites sealed their own fate as impostors to the modern discerning man. Once one begins to explore the unbelievable accuracy, the astronomical alignments, the seemingly impossible feats of block placements, 
you are seemingly presented with a controversial truth. How could a civilization who clearly believed that the Earth was not only flat, but that all experienced night at the same time, could have possibly known the information which was instilled within the construction of such sites, in particular the Giza Plateau? It should now be becoming clear that the ancient Egyptians, the Incas, Aztecs, Mayans, etc., etc., did not build these sites. However, the sites still exist, and their past function is still there to be explained. Why did so many of these civilizations, placed far closer to these original constructors than us, all agree that these structures were some sort of portal, allowing the passage of gods, spirits, or souls? Why were all these ancient civilizations, who undoubtedly worshipped the original creators of the cradle for their people, obsess over underworlds, portals, and stargates? Most ancient civilizations had belief systems surrounding death, the soul, and the passage thereof. But the strong draw to portals and gateways, somehow allowing the communication with an apparent other dimension, is undeniable. It seems so strongly entwined with these ancient people's beliefs, that these civilizations may have been aware of something regarding these amazing structures that we are not. False doors, for example. These doors to nowhere can be found all over Earth, yet interestingly, they are only found amongst the same uncannily astonishing stone cutting, which we are so often noting as indicative of a lost knowledge. Why were these doors created? Have they always led to nowhere? Or was there something extraordinary, once triggered by this precise web of ancient structures, all mysteriously aligned upon our planet? A function so many of these ancient civilizations were completely obsessed by. We recently covered the enigmatic megalith, known as the White Rock of Vilcambaba within Peru, showing how this rock was, in fact, abandoned, abandoned midway through being harvested of blocks to be used in the nearby polygonal masonry, with many other sites, many still strewn with blocks cut with a natural-appearing face, but a right-angled interlocking body. Yet upon the white rock still remained other mysterious patterns, such as that of the 90-degree steps cut into the stone. We have identified this kind of stone cutting previously, such as at Machu Picchu, clearly used to help construct the polygonal walls themselves, but also at other, until now unexplained, unfinished stones many found throughout Peru. Naupa Iglesia, for example, found just outside the astonishing ancient ruins of Olente Tambo, a mysterious megalith that many, including us, previously presumed was possibly some elaborate deliberate carving, a throne, or possibly, like the false door, meters away, an ancient portal of some form. However, when one approaches said rock with the same eye as that of the white rock, one quickly finds matching stonework, finished and installed as that of the water fountain found within Olente Tambo itself thus further supporting our hypothesis of these types of stone cuts and indeed step patterning found upon them is indicative of unfinished, abruptly abandoned stonework, many left unliberated or strewn among their ancient quarries. As with the many other discoveries made, once one begins to perceive unexplained artifacts of this nature in the correct way, they suddenly make sense and the supportive evidence simply flows from the hidden into plain sight. How this, or possibly another, clearly advanced yet once Stone Age civilization made the cut marks into the solid pink Aswan granite found upon the unfinished obelisk among many other megalithic blocks found within the Aswan quarry within Egypt, however, is yet another mystery yet to be unraveled but by identifying and distinguishing between what were enormous megalithic block quarries and what were those of the baffling polygonal blocks is, we believe, the correct path to take if one wishes to unravel the mystery of just how this lost civilization operated, what they were constructing, and hopefully explain who they were and indeed where we came from. It is a pursuit which we find highly compelling.
In perusing the amazing archaeological sites within ancient Mexico, one will inevitably be confronted with a site called Cuicuilco. Just south of Mexico City's urban sprawl, a four-step round pyramid that, like all ancient structures, has secrets to tell, a secret like the Great Sphinx, which can reveal to us, all through overwhelmingly physical evidence, a true understanding of its true antiquity. The academic world, with its papers and books abundant, funded, researched, and mass-published, supported by an institute of individuals who seek to destroy all things which disagree with them. These people would have you believe that Quiquilco was constructed at the earliest in 300 BC. However, nature would tend to disagree. Quiquilco was hardly more than a small mound with some scraggly trees growing upon it back in 1922, before Brian Cummings received permission from the Mexican government to begin an excavation at the site. During initial excavations, Brian noted that the well-known Pedegro lava flow had partially engulfed this ancient structure. He became increasingly interested in the site after learning that geologist George E. Hyde dated the Pedegro lava flow at over 7,000 years ago. Additionally, when Brian's workers successfully cut deep trenches down into this ancient lava in an effort to locate the base of the pyramid, they not only passed through the bottom of this layer, but continued through several other eras of sediment before finally reaching the high-quality paving at the original level of the structure. In fact, over 18 feet of ancient sediment lay below this 7,000-year-old volcanic activity, including two other previous lava flows, each separated by layers containing artifacts from no less than two other separate inhabitations of the area by civilizations of varying advancement. Also evidence of a past submersion in no less than six feet of seawater, another ancient structure lending credence to the Great Flood. The pyramid itself once masterfully constructed using uncut chunks of lava. Amongst the first layer of erosion and decay resting just above the original foundations of the structure, it seems were remnants of a primitive civilization that moved into the area shortly after apparent catastrophe. Is this proof of our civilization once being destroyed? Along with this initial primitive civilization is an extremely ancient lava flow, which is followed by a dramatically far more advanced civilization. Amazingly, Cummings successfully produced dates of over 10,000 years for the original sediments, more than 2,000 years before ancient Egypt was said to have been built, though we feel this was most probably just a re-inhabitation of these powerful pyramidal structures. And although he also found dates far older than 10,000 years, he reluctantly put them down to anomalies and did not record them. After the details of this excruciating and highly efficient research was understood, Brian Cummings predictably experienced the cold shoulder of conspiracy. It seems mainstream archaeology, along with the well-known overpaid figures who partake in this limited public discussion, have successfully avoided the subject altogether. Indeed, it would require a dramatic rethinking of the largely accepted chronological development of man. It would also require an extremely tricky maneuver in verbal acrobatics to get away with explaining the presence of a highly complex, highly capable, highly advanced ancient civilization, building impossible structures well over 10,000 years ago. And although it seems that mainstream archaeology has successfully avoided having to make such a spectacle of their belief systems in their attempted denials of such evidence, it will continue to be something we would like to see. Thank you.